political and economic commentator Aina Tangen joining us live from Beijing for more. Thank you so much for being with us here on the broadcast. Uh, talk to us. Uh, you see what's happening in the U.S., the kind of statements that Trump has put out. More importantly, the kind of uh, work that's being done by agencies in the U.S. in terms of uh, investigating China and the World Health Organization. Well, yes. I mean, uh, what's interesting is a couple hours before Trump made that announcement, the, uh, uh, the G general director of, uh, of office that uh, oversees all of the intelligence agency came out and said that there that they at this point uh, were uh, agreeing with the overwhelming scientific evidence that this had not been a manufactured virus. Uh, the issue about uh, whether it escaped from Wuhan, they said that they're still continuing to investigate. But keep in mind that this um, Wuhan facility was a joint venture by French and Chinese uh, scientists. They're both there. So you'd also have to believe that the French are, are in fact hiding something. So, I mean, at this point, it's a lot of speculation. It comes at a very sensitive uh, Donald Trump, uh, the worst employment news ever. He knew about it. And it seems that, uh, per usual, he wanted to interject something to eat up the oxygen so that, as we are now, we're talking about what he said about China, not the 30 million uh, people who are out of jobs in the United States. I know Trump's claims and the American action comes at a time when there is so much clamor for investigation into China from all across the world. So in that sense, uh, it, there is a constant uh, demand for a greater investigation uh, into this pandemic and uh, what exactly went wrong and why wasn't the world uh, you know, acting uh, swiftly enough? Well, uh, quite frankly, the, the agency that's tasked with that is the WHO. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, Donald Trump has uh, clearly stated that he believes that the WHO is a PR agency for China, despite the fact that the overwhelming majority, over 50 percent of the people who are working at the WHO, are in fact American citizens and scientists. Uh, so by uh, questioning their credibility, uh, he's in essence taken away the, uh, the only uh, you know, entity that it would be tasked and capable of handling a real type of investigation. I don't think that uh, China would have any problem uh, if there was things, but they don't want to be in a situation where they're convicted before there is a trial, where it's a, a mob of people trying to perhaps take away uh, the sting of not being prepared for this coronavirus, despite all the warnings that were given. I mean, Donald Trump received over 12 warnings from his closest advisors, from medical experts, from the Pentagon, from his security analysts. Uh, unfortunately, he chose to ignore them. And now, rather than saying that perhaps he should have been better prepared, it suddenly becomes more important to blame China. Ainat Dangan joining us on the broadcast. Stay with us. Uh, let's now take another look at what's happening in China, which has uh, reopened the forbidden city in capital Beijing three months after it was closed due to the pandemic. The move comes as the latest sign that China, where the disease was first reported, has now brought it under control. Heavy police deployment was seen at the UNESCO World Heritage Site in Beijing as it welcomed visitors after a long time. Several precautionary measures are being taken at the forbidden city to avoid any risks of the spread of the deadly virus. The complex has a set of daily limit of 5,000 visitors, which is down from 80,000 sightseers that it received before the pandemic. Visitors will have to wear masks and show health codes on a special mobile phone app, which will indicate if they are an infection risk. Temperatures will be taken at the entrance and anyone coughing or showing a fever will be turned away. Visitors will also have to stand one meter apart from each other. 